me a pila. Glory to God. Well, we've come to service. Won't you congratulate your neighbor for making it to church tonight? Okay, if you're going to do it, do it with some excitement, some enthusiasm. Uh, put your back to it. Do it with some energy. Say congratulations for making it to church tonight. God is good. If you will, won't you stand? We're going to pray for a moment. And then we'll get into a time of praise and worship. Is that all right? A media team, if you could help us quickly. I'm just led to the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. We'll read it together. Very familiar pericope. I'm sure you know it. But we'll read together. I think it's on your screen. Let's read. Three, two, one, go. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not go faint. Uh, one more time. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Someone say new strength. Look at your neighbor with some excitement and say new strength. Ah, find another neighbor say new strength. Yeah, those who wait, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. I'm going to share something quickly that you might not realize about that scripture. The word, the, the actual Hebrew word that is used for the word wait or the word trust that you see in this version is the Hebrew word kava. Someone say kava. One more time, say kava. Look at your neighbor and say kava in the Lord. Yeah, and, and, and the interesting thing about the word kava is it actually means to gather together. All right, so that scripture actually says, those who gather together in the Lord. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the company of people who have gathered together in the Lord tonight. Because we're about to find some new strength. So those who gather together in the Lord, that's why Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 19, chapter 18 rather, verse 19 and 20, he says that when two or three kava in my name, I am there in their midst. Jesus is in the room. And so we're going to find new strength. I want you to pray tonight. Lord, give me new strength. We have gathered in your name. We have gathered together. We have kava tonight. So give us new strength. Is that all right? Just for like three minutes and then we'll get into worship. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, here we are tonight, children of the city, citizens of the kingdom. We have gathered in your name. Your word reveals to us that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. So oh God, we thank you for your presence in this place tonight. Like the, that book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 reveals to us that those who with those who wait upon the Lord, those who gather together in the name of the Lord, they will find new strength. Thank you that even as we've come tonight, someone's strength is going to be renewed, oh God. That strength might not look like physical strength, but someone's emotional strength will be revived. Someone's spiritual strength will be revived. Someone's economical strength will be revived. Someone's health for the God will be revived tonight. Strength in all facets and all beings and ways will be revived tonight. We are leaning on you tonight, O oh God. We are searching and will find you strength, O oh God. You said in your word that those who ask, you will answer them and you will grant them the desires of their hearts. Tonight we are trusting you for a new strength, O oh God. We are leaning on you. Therefore we celebrate tonight that we'll come out of here with new strength. We are jamming those hands together, celebrating new strength, celebrating a revival that's going to take place tonight. We are celebrating that God is going to do a new thing. There's new strength for us. Scripture says that it gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. We are coming out of here, different people, by the glory of God. We are coming out of here revived by the glory of God. We are coming out of here with new strength by the glory of the living God. A praise to the great I am. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Only you and you alone deserve our worship. We worship you. Thank you for life, God. Thank 
you that in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Yes, I am a soul. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
somebody worship the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. For Forever and ever, hallelujah, amen, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, the
heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're of the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. Jesus. You deserve it. Deserve oh, the praise. Worthy, worthy is, is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve it. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is your name. Up, everybody. You deserve the praise. Worthy is, Worthy your, is your name. Come on, lift up, lift it up. Worthy is your name. Come on, just sing it to him. Jesus. Sing it to him tonight. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Every hand in this place is lifted. Come on, exalt him. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Yeah, you deserve praise. Worthy is your name. Be exalted, everybody. Come on. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. Tell him, you alone. Deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now with the raise your voice, everybody. Come on. Yeah. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. One more time. Come on. Be exalted now in the heaven as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. We worship you, Father. We exalt your name. Shandila Bosa Yanda Yadabahasi Yanda Yadamasi Yende. Iriba sote yala mahande yene bosi yamande yene mahazia. Jeda baba bosonte ya katala kadibosia. Come on, just raise your voices, raise your voices. Let the Lord hear your worship tonight. Father, we exalt your name. Your name is above every other name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. Just take a moment and exalt his name tonight. Just take a moment and bless the Lord. Tell him worthy, worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy of glory, worthy of honor, worthy of adoration. Worthy is your name. In heaven, there is no name that we are given. On earth, there is no name that we are given. Under the earth, there is no name that we are given. Father, we declare tonight that at the mention of your name, 
At the mention of your name, cancer trembles. At the mention of your name, Shandama Sandeleke Brakata. Everything dead comes to life. At the mention of your name, everything in us aligns. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We exalt you. We declare worthy, 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 worthy. Come on, do I have a church that knows that God is worthy tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Things good, you are worthy. Things bad, you are worthy. In all seasons of life, you are worthy. Shanamande yedabohosi anda. Lenrendi anama sonde yedeke bahazi. Shalama yadakada. Dendro deke deke de. Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name, God. Worthy is your name. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy of the praise. Worthy of the honor. Mashanda yalama hasi ande. Oradabako sonde ke bele ke toria. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God is the reigning champion. He is ruler of heaven and earth. Jesus, you are Lord. You are owner. You are Lord. You are Lord. We acknowledge you for who you are. And that is Lord and Savior. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Come on, lift it up, Goshen. That's it. Come on, lift it up. voice lifted. Lift it up, come on. Worthy is your name. Yeah. Lift it up, come on. Worthy is your Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Bless you, Jesus. Yeah. We, we honor you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. We magnify your name, Jesus. Come on, one more time. If we're going to clap, let's give him a good clap offering. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. If you love the Lord, give him a good clap offering tonight. He is worthy. Yeah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Tonight before you take your seats, why don't you welcome the people around you. Amen. Give them a high five. Give them a hug. Amen. Hallelujah. These are part of the devoted ones. Amen. These are the devoted followers of our Lord and Savior. These are the good disciples. And you may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So good to see all of you tonight. Good evening, City of Goshen. How are you guys doing? Amen. Hallelujah. So good to see you here tonight. I know that God has a word for all of us. Amen. Um, so good. I love these uh, Wednesday sessions. Uh, they're more of a Bible study. Amen. Uh, the next Demonstrate Wednesday we're going to have, uh, we'll have a more of a worship service. Please just ease up on the smoke a bit. Thank you. Uh, we'll have more of a um, worship service. Amen. Um, we'll have more of a worship service. So we'll, spend, we'll get to spend more time with Sound of Goshen as they lead us in, 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 in worship. Um, so that's going to be on the next uh, Demonstrate Wednesday, amen. So it's going to be a good one. Uh, please look out for that one. I don't know if this thing is malfunctioning or you're doing it intentionally, trying to smoke me out. Uh, please turn it off. Thank you. Okay, it's still blowing in. We're going to start praying for it. Thank you. Thank you. So kind of you. Amen. All right. Um, how are you guys doing? Are you good? How many of you are coughing? Just wave. Yeah. Is it the smoke? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, anyways, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's one of those funny seasons, the change of weather. Amen. But we are still here. We are still singing. We are still worshiping God. Amen. I don't want to waste much time tonight. I'm not going to be the one sharing the word, uh, but one of us here, Brother Hebert, is going to be leading us in word tonight. Just share the word of God. If we can kindly clap our hands as we welcome him as he comes forward. Come, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody can get him a microphone. Please just get him a microphone. Uh, I think I didn't communicate clearly with the guys. My apologies on that. Hallelujah. Uh, how many of us were graduating this past week? I want to pray for all the graduates on Sunday. Well done. Well done. Well done to you guys. Amen. Well done to you guys. Congratulations. Amen. You made it. Uh, you made it. You have a degree. You have a diploma. Um, Sunday is going to be a very special service. I'm going to pray for all the graduates that graduated um, within the month. Uh, as well, you know, I know that God has got something special for you. You cannot graduate and not have a job. It's impossible. Amen. So we're going to believe God for a breakthrough for each and every one of you guys. You are the next big lawyers. You're the next politicians. You're the next doctors. You are the no next pilots. Amen. Uh, you are kingdom financiers. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll pray for you. on Sunday. Let's give it up for Brother Herbert as he comes. Amen. God bless you, sir. Let's clap for our dad as he sits down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Nice to see us here in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Before we even go into the word or prayer or anything, I just want to honor our spiritual father also for such an opportunity to stand on his altar. And of course, with our mother, amen. Come on, let's appreciate them for that. It's a privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just spend a few minutes to pray, two or three minutes to pray while you are seated? Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word gives light. Oh God, we thank you even this evening. 
as we are gathered in your presence, we know, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are here to minister to us. We thank you, Father, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy that endures forever. Lord, we worship you. We join the 24 elders before God, and we bow before your throne, and we cast our crowns to you, O God. Father, we honor you. We appreciate you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the monarch of the universe, O oh God. We thank you and we know that even as we are in your presence, you are doing us good, O oh God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give the praise. We honor you, O oh God, for it is in your presence that is fullness of joy. It is in your presence that is power, grace, and truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you the praise and we honor you in Jesus' Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody appreciate the Lord one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's hard to preach before your own spiritual father, your mate, your leader. It's really hard because... You are conscious of everything that you're about to say. Praise the Lord. And not because of tension, but because of the responsibility. Probably you think, are they weighing my knowledge, my understanding? Am I growing? Praise the Lord. But thank you so much, Papa. And I'm so honored to stand before you. And Mama, thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of us were here last Sunday? Okay. How many of us were here last Wednesday? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, there is something that Papa preached about on loyalty and commitment, and I also want to add on to that. Praise the Lord. I want to just make an extension of what he taught. Amen. Just to give you a quick look up of what he taught about. On Wednesday, if you remember, he began to teach on what royalty and commitment is, right? And he said loyalty simply means commitment. And if you remember, one of the things that he talked about, he said that... Um, when you're a loyal person or you, when you're a leader, one of the things that you do is you cover up your leader's weakness. That is one of the things that stood out for me, that you are able to cover up your leader's weakness. And not necessarily because the leader is weak, but there are times whereby also as a leader or as a minister or as an individual, you have your own personal weaknesses. And as a good loyal person or a leader, you must cover up your leader's weaknesses. That stood out for me. And on Sunday, uh, we remember he gave an extended teaching on that, and he taught on the rewards of loyalty and commitment. Praise the Lord. Amen. You remember that? And one of the things he said is that it's very important for us to be uh, uh, privately loyal in our own personal lives. When no one is seeing you, when no one is with you, if you are able to be loyal when you are alone, if you are able to loyal to be loyal to your partner when they are not there, if you, are, if you can be able to be loyal to your man of God, to your leader, when no one is seeing you, say, that is the foundation of loyalty. Hallelujah. And also the other thing that he stood out for me from that, he said that during the place of preparation and loyalty, we serve faithfully. Say that again. We serve faithfully. Hallelujah. So those are the two things that literally Papa talked about and he touched on in the recap. So uh, loyalty means commitment, right? And he said that it's very important for you during the times when you are loyal that you are able to cover up your leader's weaknesses. And on Sunday, he said that when you are a loyal person, you prepare your loyalty even when no one is seeing you. Are we together? And then, of course, he ended by saying that loyalty means that you are faithful in your preparation time. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, tonight, I want to share something quickly. And, of course, we shall pray and uh, Papa will come back and close to us the service. Amen. I want you to listen carefully. And, of course, if you can be able to take notes, I want to share about um, the wisdom to maintain loyalty. When Papa, when I was listening to his teachings on loyalty, I, 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 the, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me about how also it is important for us to be able to maintain our loyalty. For instance, if you're a loyal person to your oh, marriage covenant, how are you going to be able to maintain that loyalty? If you're a loyal friend for your friend, how are you going to be able to maintain that loyalty? If you're a loyal citizen in a country, how are you going to be able to maintain that loyalty? loyalty if you a loyal son submitted or perhaps to a man of god how are you going to be able to maintain that loyalty there is the wisdom for that hallelujah 
And I want us to quickly go through it. Then, of course, we shall be able to have some, you know, more exposition to that. Amen. Now, the very first thing I want us to look into is Luke chapter 14 and verse 25 to 35. We are going to read this. Luke chapter 14 and verse 25 until verse 35. Can we all read? As massive crowds followed Jesus, he turned to them and said, when you follow me as my disciples, you must put aside your father, your mother, your wife, your sisters, your brothers. Yes, you will even seem as though you, you hate your own life. This is the price you will pay to be considered one of my followers. You see, unline that word, this is the price you will pay to be considered one of my followers. Next line. And anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own. All he cannot be considered to be my disciple. Verse 28. So don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who would construct a house before first sitting down to estimate the cost to complete it? Verse 29. Otherwise he may lay the foundation and not be able to finish. The neighbors will review him saying, verse 30. Look at him. He started to build but couldn't complete it. Verse 31. Have you ever heard of a commander who goes out to war without first sitting down with strategic planning to determine the strength of his army to win the war against a stronger opponent? Verse 32. If he knows he doesn't stand a chance of winning the war, the wise commander will send out delegates to ask for the terms of peace. Verse 33. Likewise, unless you surrender all to me, giving up all your possessions, you cannot be one of my followers. Verse 34, salt is good for seasoning, but if salt were to lose its flavor, how could it ever be restored? Verse 35, it will never be useful again, not even fit for the soul or the mature power. If you have ears opened by the Spirit, then hear the meaning of what I have said and apply it to yourself. God bless the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands to God? Amen. Now, when we speak about being able to maintain loyalty, the Lord Jesus Christ begins the conversation to his disciples. I wanted us to read the entire passage so we can drive out the meaning in that passage. He speaks to them about the art and the cost which it will cost them to be able to follow him or perhaps be one of the disciples. Are we together? And the, one of the things he told them, if you are not going to be able to count the cost for you to follow me, don't do it. Lest when a time comes when there's need in you exercising loyalty, you back off. So he uses the example of a commander and he says, a commander before he assigns his army to go out to war, they first consider the cost of what it will take them to win that battle. Are we together? So if they realize they don't have enough resources, enough means, and enough skill, or probably competent people who will be able to fight and win that battle, they either send the terms of peace with the other army or perhaps they surrender and withdraw. Are we together? Now, it's not lack of faith. It's applying wisdom. You understand? Now, when it comes to loyalty, it's not lack of faith that we shouldn't go for. There are some wars you shouldn't go for. When you see that you are weak enough to fight, it's wisdom to step back and say, okay, God, I will not fight this war because I, it's not lack of faith. You are just exercising wisdom. So, Jesus Christ tells them to be a loyal disciple unto me, to be a loyal follower to me and for what I'm going to do. One of the things you must do is to exercise and know the cost that will take you to be so loyal to me. And that's what I want to talk about, how to maintain that loyalty. Because that's what Christ now begins to define and even so continue to teach onto them. Are we together? Now, there are three things which I wrote here that I believe they will help us to understand how to maintain our loyalty. Hallelujah. Three keys on how to maintain loyalty. Number one is establish a firm loyal foundation to the word of God and prayer consistently. The Bible says in Luke 18 verse 1 that men ought to pray and not faint. Are we together? Now the implication of that, it's hard to be a loyal person as a Christian. In the world there is no something called loyalty. 
Worldly people are never loyal. Do you know why? Because the Bible says the devil is a liar. And anyone who is not saved, who is not born again, is a child of the devil, right? That's what Christ said. That means a worldly person can promise you to be here at two and they show up at seven. And for them, it's okay. You get the point? So worldly people, in worldly terms, there is no loyalty. In worldly terms, there is not loyalty. Why? Because you can never trust a person who does not have the light of the knowledge of Christ. Are we together? Are we together? Now, Jesus Christ tells them, you have to be loyal to my commandments and to my path. Now, when you establish a firm foundation in the word of God and having a strong prayer altar, it's easy for you to be a loyal person. Because most of the people that get offended out of loyalty, most of the people who lose their loyalty is because they don't know the way of the word of God and they don't have a prayerful life. It's hard for a person who knows scriptures to be offended over a slight small thing. It's hard. Because you have so much light in you. It's hard for a Christian who's founded in the word of God to be offended by a negative response. Because they know what to do with a negative response. But if you are not founded in the word of God, you'll be hard and you'll easily lose your loyalty. So even before we dive deeper, you have to be able to be founded in the word of God to be a loyal person. If you can't be loyal to the word of God, then there's no way you're going to be loyal to your husband. There's no way you're going to be loyal to your man of God. There's no way you're going to be loyal to your own purpose and destiny. So you have to be loyal and be firmly planted in the word of God. Hallelujah. Then, prayer. Somebody say prayer. Now, prayer is the foundation of the Christian faith. There is no way you are going to be loyal if you don't have a strong prayer altar. One of the reasons as to why, for instance, the Bible says we do not fight flesh and blood. Are we together? That means there's a time whereby your loyalty will be tested. And the only cure for that testation is the prayer altar. For instance... Last time, Papa spoke something in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 4, where the Bible says, if a ruler's spirit raises, or when a ruler gets angry at you, he says, don't lose your place. Do you know what most people do when their spiritual fathers or when their leaders get mad at them? Instead of, like Papa said, instead of covering up the weakness of the man of God or the leader, they go and begin to speak stuff. But when a loyal person gets that, you know what they do? Because they are founded in the word of God, they know the Bible says, never respond negatively to negative response. And because they are also founded in prayer, what would they do? They will go and they say, let me pray for so and so. Let me pray for this sister. Let me pray for this brother. Let me pray for my leader. Let me pray for my man of God. Those are the key foundation basics for loyalty. Be founded in the word of God and have a strong prayer altar. Are we together? Then number two is know and understand the principles and the laws that govern what you are loyal to. I want us to read a scripture in John chapter 14 and verse 15. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Can we all read it? John chapter 14 and verse 15. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Can we all read it? If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus Christ speaks to these people. If you love me, if you are going to be loyal to me, keep my commandments. Christ didn't say if you love me or if you are loyal to me, keep me. Worship me. Be faithful to me. He took them back to the principles that govern his life, his commandments. If you are going to be loyal to me, Keep my commandments. Now, every organization, every company, every leader, every minister, or even perhaps a church, even yourself here, you have principles and laws that govern your life. Now, if you are going to be loyal to somebody or anything, you have to understand what are the principles around their lives and what are the laws around their lives that they live by. Why? Because you don't exercise loyalty to an individual. You exercise loyalty to the vision and the mission of the individual. And I'm going to explain that. For instance, let's give an example of our spiritual father. He has a vision and he has a mission. But also remember, he is a spirit 
anointed by God, but also existing in a body. Right? A time will come, or perhaps 100 years from now, and none of us here is alive and existing. Now, if there was anybody who was loyal to the vessel or the individual, their loyalty would have faded away. But if there was anybody who was loyal to the vision and the mission, because the vision of Goshen will still stand even after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Now, I want you to understand this, because this is very important. That's how most people, they fail to keep their loyalty. Because most people, they are loyal to the person. They are not loyal to the vision of the person. Oh, I don't know if you're getting that. Most people, they are loyal to the mission of the person. To, to, to the individual and the things around them, they are not loyal to the vision of the person. Let me give an example. Like what Papa talked about, how loyalty is exercised in your private time. If you are loyal to my presence, that means if I'm not around, you will not be motivated to fulfill my vision and mission. Why? Because you are only loyal to the person, not to their vision. So if someone is around, you do what we call eye service. When they are out, you are yourself. That's not loyalty. And the day they discover that, that's why you see people are fired from companies. That's why you see people, they break trust and loyalty. Why? Because they give themselves to be loyal to a different thing. We are many young people here. You can see a beautiful girl, guys here, and you love her and all of that. And now you begin to become loyal to her. Not because of her, of who she is, but you are loyal to the dress code you saw. So you begin to do everything because you are drawn by a dress code. Now, the day that dress code and appearance begins to fade away slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly, your loyalty withdraws because you were loyal to the wrong thing. So when we are exercising loyalty, we become loyal to the vision and the mission of the person, not things that are coming out of them. Are we together? Praise the Lord Jesus. Are we together? That's the same thing with the nation. A president can be so corrupt, or there can be embezzlement in the government. There can be all kinds of stuff going on in a country, or in an organization, or even in a company. Now, you are not loyal to the president. You are loyal to the spirit of the country. Because tomorrow we can have another president. If you say, oh, this country is bad. No, the country is not bad. We just have a wrong leadership system and management. If we change that, perhaps the country is still okay. So your loyalty is to the country, your loyalty is to the church, your loyalty, like what Papa was saying, someone can say, we left God, we didn't leave the church. No, the church is the vision and the mission of God. So if you are loyal to God, you're not going to leave the church. And the person who offended you is just a vessel who can also error. So you continue to be committed because you are committed to the vision and the mission. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Number three. Number three. Are we all together here? Amen. Number three. Be loyal to the source and not to the resource. Be loyal to the source and not to the resource. Now there's a passage of scripture I want us to read. Be loyal to the source and not to the resource. And we are going to come back to this. Can we read Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16? Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. 1, 2, 3. Let's all read. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you.
if tomorrow a man of God who's so anointed loses the anointing, what happens to most people? They leave. Why? Because they were after the anointing, not the man of God. Tomorrow, whatever scandal hits that same man of God and leader you are serving, will you still be loyal? That's where loyalty is tested. So you are loyal to the source and not to the resource. If you are married, your marriage covenant is your source. So you don't commit adultery because you promised your wife. You don't do it because uh, you want to have a good marriage and never contract any of those things that come with all that, that kind of life. You commit to that because you saw a covenant and that covenant doesn't break. But remember, tomorrow you can wake up and the wife who used to look beautiful, that day she's not beautiful. Or a man who used to look good, that is not good. Now you don't change your loyalty because of the resource that happened. The resources can change, but the source never changes. It's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rapha. Those are all resources, but the source, God, is still the same. So you commit to the covenant you have with your wife. Not the resources, money, car, the things, influence, fame, power. You don't commit to that. You commit to the source, the covenant you have. Death separate us. You commit to that covenant. That's the way you preserve loyalty. So when you understand that I'm loyal, why am I loyal? Am I loyal because of the opportunities? Am I loyal because of the money? Am I loyal because of the graces? Am I loyal because of one, two, three? No, I'm loyal because of the covenant. That's why when you understand the vision of the person, it's easy for you to be loyal to a person when you know their vision. Because what are you going to be loyal to? If I may ask you, are you loyal? Yes, I'm loyal. What are you loyal to? You realize actually you're not literally loyal. You are just performing. And do you know what that is called? It's called atmosphere performance. Bring that, it's here. Do this, it's here. That's all good. Anyone can do that. But when you understand the vision, even when you are alone, you can still go on your knees and say, God, I pray for that vision. You are alone, nobody's there. And as you're praying, you see some people that are so spiritual, they can pick up the signal. Oh, I feel someone is praying for me. You see, men of God are not stupid. When we say man of God, they're so sensitive to the realm of the spirit. So when you commit to that vision, even in their absence, they can still connect to that puzzle. So and so is committed, not because of the opportunities and the resources, but because of the vision I carry. And that's eternal commitment and loyalty. So number one, you have to have a strong word life and prayer life. Number two, be committed to the principles, the vision of that person and the mission of that person. And number three, be committed to the source and not to the resource. Are we together? Now the very last thing and we pray. How then do you build loyalty? Now there are three things also I want to share with you and we shall pray and that will come and close up. There are things that can help you build loyalty and those same things can also destroy loyalty. Let us go to the book of um, 1 Samuel 24 verse 1 to 10 quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 24 from verse 1 to 10. Are we together? Are we together here? Come on somebody, say amen. Say amen somebody. So 1 Samuel chapter 24 verse 1 to 10. We are going to read this in the message version. 1, 2, 3, let's all read. When Saul came back after dealing with the Philistines, he was told, David is now in the wilderness of Eden Gad. Saul took their three companies, the best you could find in all Israel, and set out in search for David and his men in the region of Wilder Goat Rocks. He came to the same sheep pens. Let's continue. Along the road, there was a cave there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were huddled far back in the same cave. David's men whispered to him. Listen, listen to this very carefully. Who whispered to David? Who whispered to David? I believe the, I wish. Can you believe it? Can you, that was too much. Can you, can you believe a man gossiping that much? Someone came to David. Can you believe it? And David's like, what is happening? Okay, let's go. This... This 
is the day God was talking about when they even put in God. Can you imagine? They even put in God. They're like, this is the day God was talking about. David is like, which day? I will put your enemy into your arms. And David's like, yes. What are you talking? What is it happening? You can do whatever you do. Let's go. With what you want with him. Quiet as a cat, David crept up and cut off a piece of Saul's royal robe. Now, listen to this. Something happened. David's men come to him and they will blackmail him. They convince him. They use God in the picture. They use opportunity has come for you. You are anointed as king. God approved you. And here's your enemy. What are you supposed to do? And David begins to move and say, okay, let me do it. And he goes and he cuts off the robe off. So, right? Let's continue. Verse 6, verse 5. Immediately, the Bible says, immediately he felt guilty. He said to his men, God forbid that I should have done this to my master. God's anointed that I should so much as raise a finger against him. He's God's anointed. David held his men in a check with these words and wouldn't let them pounce on Saul. Saul got up, let's continue, left the cave and went on down the road. Verse 8. Then David stood at the mouth of the cave and called to Saul, my master, my king. Saul looked back. David fell on his knees and bowed in reverence. He called out, why do you listen to those who say David is out to get you? This is this very day with your very own eyes. I have seen that I, I have, I, you have seen that just now in, let's continue. The cave God put you in my hands. My men wanted to kill you, but I wouldn't do it. I told them that I wouldn't feel, lift a finger against God's master, his God's anointed. Oh, my father, look at this. Look at this piece that I cut from your rope. I could have cut you, killed you, but I didn't. Look at the evidence. Now, the three things that build loyalty and destroy it. Number one is people. People build loyalty and people destroy loyalty. Number two is situations. Situations build loyalty and situations destroy loyalty. And number three is circumstances. Circumstances build loyalty and circumstances destroy loyalty. Now David encountered all those three in one single night. People came to him. Remember David was already loyal. They came to him. They gave him false wisdom, forbidden counsel, and they tell him, go and kill him. What? People. Look at him and tell them, you're not the one. People build loyalty and people destroy loyalty. Now, how you respond to people can either destroy your loyalty or build it. How you value people, I wrote here, how you value, treat, and commit to people affects your loyalty. Now, David valued Saul as king. He committed to him as his servant, and he honored him as his master. Even when David got an opportunity to kill Saul, he didn't do it. Why? Because he understood that his loyalty will be bought Tested. The same soul praised David. Is the same soul looking to kill David. His loyalty was tested by Saul and proved, but also his loyalty is being tested by Saul again to be disqualified. I don't know if you're understanding this. But because David had a covenant with God, I will not touch God's anointed one. What did he do? He didn't lay a hand on Saul. Why? Because David was not lo loyal to Saul as a person. He was loyal to God and the covenant he had with him. If David was loyal to Saul, he could have killed him. But David was not loyal to Saul. He was loyal to the covenant he had. 
That's why he maintained his covenant. That's what we call covenant loyalty. And that's where your heart is tested. Even when this young man killed Saul, what did David do? He killed the man who killed because he said this man was God's anointed. But we all remember that the anointing had left Saul. But how come David was still calling him God's anointed? Covenant. Covenant. When you understand that, you cannot speak against your pastor. Even if you hear the worst story, you'll just keep quiet and say, let it die wherever it came from. Even if someone comes to you and gives you the worst news about your spiritual father, about your leader, about your friend, you just close the door and shut yourself say, I came for God. Loyalty. Are we together? Then situations. Now, I wrote something here. That how you respond to situations affect your loyalty. How you respond to situations affects your loyalty. There can be a situation in your life that will request you to rest, that will, re that will require you to respond so good and so well for your loyalty to be approved or to be disqualified. That's where most of us fail. For instance, give an example, you are married and you realize that your husband is a human being, your wife is also a human being. And the day you literally wanted to talk is the day she didn't want to talk. Now, if you're a man who's so loyal, you'll capture the situation and you'll have a good reaction in that situation to preserve your loyalty. For instance, I'm giving an example. There are times whereby uh, I'm walking, or oh, Papa is walking by church. I always avoid him in the corner. When I see him coming, I always avoid him. But there are times whereby uh, he can pass and it does not say hi, Johnson, or hello. But I feel the guilt of my spiritual father facing me and I didn't greet him. So I always try to avoid. Now to someone, that may look so small, but to a leader, that can be a point where he tests your loyalty in a situation. Give, for example, an instance. A time comes and Fafa, you are the only person available to sing. And even that availability was planned and made by your leader. That is a situation for you. Now your response in that situation will qualify or disqualify your loyalty. Were well, you loyal to a situation or you are loyal to the source? I don't know if you're getting this. Then circumstances. There are circumstances that come in your life and they will test your loyalty. And I wrote here, how you act and react to circumstances will determine your loyalty. For instance, a circumstance can come and befall us, maybe as leaders, as a ministry, or as people who are one, who are praying together, who are together. And that circumstance will require intense commitment, intense sacrifice, intense availability, and a person who is not disloyal. That's the time you feel that you, are, you should sleep and rest. Do you know most of the times I really feel like I shouldn't pray? Those are the days I actually have to pray. It's amazing how destiny can test us. The, the day you feel not fasting is the time pastor announces fasting. Are we together? The day you feel like, oh, I'm so exhausted. That's the time God gives you an instruction. And that circumstance now is testing for your loyalty. And the day you feel the energy and obedience to do anything, nothing is happening. And the day you have too much money, or perhaps there's no asking for anything, nothing. And the day you literally have the last one. I remember the very first time God told me to come and submit to Papa is my witness. I knelt down. It was there before even the church started, before the first service. I think the first Wednesday, before the first Wednesday service. And all I had in my pocket, even in my account, was 1,050 rands. And God told me, get that money, put it in an envelope, kneel down and give it to him. And tell him, I've come to submit you. I said, God, which money? He said, the fifth run or the thousand runs? <laughs> and he was so clear. 
their southern runs. Very clear, very clear. And I got it, put it in an envelope. I got the 50 runs, put in my car, fuel. I prayed for the grace that that fuel doesn't finish because it was already empty. And I was coming from far. I came, I don't know what was happening there. I think it was the Bible study before the, the, the service started, before the launch. So I knelt down, I gave it the message. God spoke to me, and this and this, I gave him. He was very happy and he prayed for me. He was doing something very happy. I don't know what was happening then. I met mom on the road, mom on the, on the door, then I went through. And I was going in, I was, as I was going out of my car, I'll be honest with you, tears began to roll out of my heart. Not because of, not because of the money, but because of the sacrifice it takes to be loyal to the voice of God. You see, it's easy for you to say, God, I worship you. I give you all the praise. And Papa wasn't there when God was speaking to me. He didn't know anything. And even today, I've never taught him, I think. Sorry for sharing this. But that loyalty will commit you. That's what will happen when you see a man falling down, whom you came to serve. Will you fast and pray for them, even without telling them? Can you get money and put in the account without even putting your name? That if you reach that level of loyalty, let me tell you, you have proven yourself to be a good and faithful servant. Because it will cost you to be so loyal to a vision. Let me tell you, sometimes, there's a day I drove in church and I sat by the back there and tears began to come out of my eyes. Because I could see how much it takes to sacrifice and have some of the things we see. Loyalty. Now, that kind of compelling grace will drive you to be loyal, to wake up and pray, to fast, to commit, to avail yourself. Why? Because you have understood you are loyal to the source and not to the resource. And even maybe perhaps one day, my own spiritual father can maybe say something that offends. I will not count that offense. I'll just carry you because I know a father can't hurt their children. Has your parent ever beaten you and you don't feel like entering the house? And you say, I'm not going to come back home. And in the evening, there you are in the evening, sitting home and eating. Because you know they still love you. If we can grasp that even in the house of God, you'll be committed you will be committed, you will be loyal, you will be available. Praise the Lord. And as we close, Papa is going to come and pray for us even as we believe God for great things. But saints, I'm calling you to a place of being loyal, not because of people, not because of situations, not because of circumstances, but because you are loyal to the source and not to the resources. Can you rise up on your feet and give God the praise this evening? I can have my mic, please. Thank you. Let's appreciate the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. That was a good word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, we're going to pray in a minute and give our offering. You know, um, when, I, when I said the word about, you know, uh, a big part of leadership or serving, um, you know, means covering your, your leader's weaknesses. What, what that really means is you have to be what I'm not. You understand? And so it's not a, a matter of trying to outshine your leader. It's you covering where they are weak. So, so for example, you've got a beautiful praise and worship. You've got soprano singers, you've got altos, you've got tenors. Everyone has a place and a role to play. You take away um, the soprano, the harmony is affected. You take away the lead singer, then they sometimes don't know where to come in and and what to do, so the lead singer is important. You take away the, the, the tenor and leave the soprano and alto, still the harmony is affected. And so as a servant and as a leader, you come in and you fill the gaps. So what is needed is what you become. 
That is, that, is, that is serving. What is needed is what I am. Yesterday I walked in here, I had a, a, a meeting in the morning with my wife and, uh, um, and, and, and a couple in church. And when I came in, I was talking to Apostle on the phone. And, and Apostle and I can go on and on and on. And you know, I was already late for the meeting uh, by a couple of minutes. Not very late, it was just a couple of minutes. You know. I don't want to say loyalty. Uh, some loyalty was being tested right there, amen. And so, but here I am, I walked into my office, I walked out, I'm talking to Apostle, I came up here, I'm buying time. There's no way I'm going to tell Apostle I have to go. <laughs> because of a meeting. So I have to allow him to speak whatever he's saying and finish. And so I'm, I'm, I'm holding on and I'm, and I'm feeling bad for the guys that have been waiting for me because, you know, they probably have got other things to do. But I'm speaking to my spiritual father. And, and, uh, and usually when I'm talking to him, sometimes if, if I'm standing, if I'm in the house, when he phones me, I'll sit down and, and answer the phone. Or I'll take a walk and just distract myself with something. But it's difficult for me to respond to him just anyhow. You know, and I, I'm not saying that's how you, you need to be with me or wherever it is that you're serving. But through revelation of who he is to me, that's how I respond to him. Now, serving for 10 years in, in House of Treasures, that was amazing for me. I learned a lot of things. I learned how to preach. Um, I learned what it meant to sacrifice. My wife is here. Whenever there is conference there, some of you have experienced it. Whenever there is conference there, we will literally stay with Apostle and his guests. Sometimes we'll be standing outside while he's busy with his guests and we will wait until midnight. Why? The revelation and the instruction of God was that never leave my servant unattended. That was to me. And, and because he hasn't told me to stop, even now, I'm still accountable. I have to be there. Whenever he needs me, I'll drop stuff. If he tells me, uh, please come and preach at House of Treasures on Sunday, even if I have prepared a mega message for you guys, I will go. Why? I'm loyal to my men of God. There is no way that there can be something happening in the house of the Lord and I'm not a part of it. Why? Because the vision needs me. And I believe that in this season, God is raising us as well. And uh, one of my major complaints, and I'm going to be quite blunt about it, one of my major complaints was, um, you know, managing and running a church is very difficult and very expensive. It's not easy at all. It's very, very difficult. So one of my major issues was, you know, um, having a strictly young people-led church, because that is what we are. You know, and I went to God, I said, God, this is not going to work. You know, I cannot manage students, and it's like, geez, this is not going to work. You know, I said, God, no, no, no. How are we going to fund the work? How are we going to finance it? We already have so many expenses. How are we going to do this? And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be under pressure. But one of the things that I saw happening, uh, and much recent, much, much recent, God said to me that I planted you here because I want you to groom them to be kingdom citizens from a young age. Let them, let them experience the kingdom. And God is going to lift up people out of this place in an amazing way. Listen, I don't, I, I, I don't talk, I'm, I'm one person, I don't talk bad about politicians. Quite frankly, I don't care about all that stuff that they do, all oh, the corruption and all that. My focus is on raising future leaders. I'm not worried about the outgoing leaders. Those guys are, they are outgoing leaders. The, the, the issue is with us here, the incoming leaders. And so even now, as we're getting into a season of voting, I'm not worried about what MK, ANC, EFF. Uh, that's, not, that's not an issue. 
for me is what are we learning and what are the ones that are coming after these ones going to do and I love what he said about being loyal to our nation you understand so we don't focus on counterfeit leaders we build authentic leaders kingdom leaders amen we will not abandon South Africa because of bad leadership what we will do is we will raise good leaders and we will pray for our nation. That's why we've got these flags here. It's loyalty to our nation. I love South Africa. And we will build our country brick by brick. Even if it takes us the next 50 years, we will do it. No matter how long it took the Israelites, they made it to the promised land. So we will make it to the promised land. Let's remain loyal and committed. I want us to pray tonight. Father, give me the wisdom to become what I'm needed in my church, to become what, I'm, what, what, what is missing in my home. Amen? You see, that's why you read so many <clears throat> different facets of God. To some, he's known as Jaira. He is exactly what you need when you need him to be. So may God give you the wisdom and the grace to become what is needed in the house of the Lord when it's needed. To become what is needed in society when it's needed. To become what is needed in your home when it's needed. When they need food, God, I am the right candidate for the job. I'm available to be the provider. I'm available to be the breadwinner. When they need prayers, God, I am the intercessor that they need. Give me the wisdom for loyalty. Give me the wisdom to become a solution bearer in my generation. Loyal to my generation. I will not fail my generation, not by my strength, but by the grace of God. I will be the example that my generation needs. By strength shall no man prevail. So you're not going to do it out of your own strength. You will do it by the grace of God. May God use you as an example in your generation. In the next two minutes, lift up your voice and just pray to God. Father, give us the grace tonight to be loyal servants, to be loyal stewards of what you've entrusted us with, to be loyal handlers of wealth, to be loyal handlers of opportunities, to be loyal husbands and wives, to be loyal friends, to be loyal sons, to be loyal daughters, to be loyal leaders even in the companies that we work for. Give us the grace, O oh God. Give us the revelation of what loyalty means to us as individuals. Give us that grace, Father, that in every situation, in every circumstance, O oh God, give us the grace to remain loyal to the people that we encounter, to the people that we work with, in the relationships you give us. Give us the grace to remain loyal to the tasks that we have to accomplish. Give us the grace, O oh God, to never be lazy, to never walk away and sell off our loyalty when circumstances change. In and out of season, I, re I, I declare and decree that, Lord, we will be loyal. We will be loyal. We will be loyal, not just when things are good, but even when things are funny, we will be loyal. Give us grace, O oh God, to be loyal leaders, even in the church. Give us grace, O oh God, to be loyal men and women that our God can rely on. God, give us the grace to be loyal intercessors for our generation, to be men and women who will stand in the gap and pray for our generation, and pray for our generation. Give us the grace, O oh God, to be loyal with the coming revival. That Lord, if you're looking for evangelists, here we are tonight. We are loyal to you. We are loyal to your vision. If you're looking for prophets, God, we are here tonight. We are loyal to your vision. Whatever the vision requires me to be, I am. Whatever your vision requires me to become, I am. If it means I don't sleep sometimes and I have to be praying, then God, so be it. I am loyal to the vision. I am loyal to the vision. I am loyal to the vision. Even at times when my flesh is weak, give me grace to remain loyal. Give me us the grace, oh God. Give us the grace. Give us the grace to remain loyal. Even I as a pastor, give me the grace to remain loyal 
to the congregants you have brought under us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us grace to lead. Give us the wisdom to lead with integrity. Give us the wisdom, O oh God, Shalaba Sunday, to not bring the kingdom into disrepute. Give us grace, O oh God, to handle money. Give us grace. Come on, just pray for yourself. Give us grace. Give us grace. Give us grace to handle fame. Give us grace, O oh God, to, to be loyal even in our losing seasons, to be loyal in our winning seasons, to be loyal, O oh God, in dark times, to be loyal, O oh God, in the valley, to be loyal, O oh God, on the mountaintops. Give us the grace tonight, Lord God Almighty. The Lord money will not make us sell off our loyalty. Lord, as long as I am planted in this house, I will remain loyal. As long as you want me here, I will be here. In the name of Jesus, just pray for yourself tonight that nothing will move me from my, from my God-given purpose. Nothing will move me, oh God. Offense will not take me away from where you have planted me. I will remain loyal. I will remain loyal to the soil that you planted me in. In the name of Jesus. For I know that this is my fruitful place. I know, oh God, that this is my place of growth. I know, oh God, that this is my place of acceleration. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. You know, something just dawned to me as we we're praying in terms of being loyal to a vision to the vision of God please prepare your offering in terms of being loyal to the vision of God about Abraham God says to Abraham listen leave your country leave everything you know leave your friends take your wife and go to a land that I will show you. And then he says, that's where I have commanded the blessing for you. Now, God does not give him a geographical location. He doesn't give him an address. He says, go. And you see, the reason why God put it that way was because there was going to be a lot of movement happening. Circumstances were going to change. Sometimes he would find himself in a foreign land. Sometimes he would find himself with people fighting him in the land that God told him to go. And, and God would say to him, listen, we are not there yet. For now, stay here. Wherever this guy got to, the blessing was there because he was following the vision. So the vision led him five steps ahead. He is now in Sodom. God says, leave and go down the road. And wherever God led him, God prospered him in that place. No matter the circumstances, as long as he was hearing the voice of God, the location did not matter. Where he was did not matter. Some of us, we are here tonight led by the Spirit to be here. And this may not be your final destination. God may call you next year. Some of you are here because you are studying. God may move you to America. When you get there, as long as it's God moving you into that place, He will prosper you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this is amazing. Committing to the voice and the vision of God is so critical. Because whatever you do in this house, you're not doing it because you like me. You're doing it because God planted and sent you here for that season of your life. You may not understand it. Why am I in this church? God, why am I required to do this and that? Because you are the man of the season. Hallelujah. You are the woman for that season. And God will move you and say, listen, we are going up the mountain now. And God was so strategic. He didn't tell him where he was going. He just said, go. I will tell you. When you get there, I will tell you. And so he gets to a place. God says, pitch your tent. Sleep here for three nights. Wakes up in the morning. God says, let's keep moving. Amazing. That is an amazing journey of faith. Hallelujah. And so I want you to adopt that kind of spirit where you are committed to the voice of God. As long as whatever you require of me, God, you have it. Hallelujah. My response is yes and amen. 
If he says go, sir, yes, sir. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No matter the pressure. Let's take out our offering tonight as we pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to demonstrate our loyalty to the work in this place through giving. Thank you that, Lord, we have heard your voice when you require us to give. And tonight we give cheerfully, knowing that we are giving to your vision. Knowing that, Lord, we are planting to your vision. We are plugging in and connecting to your vision. Father, with our resources, we are saying tonight, Malham Bivangeli. With our resources, we are saying tonight, keep the lights of your house on. With our resources, we are saying tonight, whatever is needed in this house, may I be a part of it. We are connecting to this vision tonight. And we know, God Almighty, that you have no needs, for you are the supplier of the seed. You are the one who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So whatever we are giving tonight comes from you. And thank you for entrusting us with these resources, knowing that we have needs, and that but we will be faithful to taking it exactly where you want us to take it to. So Father, be glorified in our offerings tonight. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may give your offering tonight. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just want to remind us of our prayer on Saturday morning. Um, it's, it's not women's what what this time. It's everyone. Amen. Ah, but the fire that was here on Saturday, family, that was amazing. Oh God, brothers, we have work to do. No, we have work to do. We must lead from the front, amen. As we, when we pray, <laughs> the street must vibrate, amen. <laughs> we must do something more powerful, hallelujah. We must lead from the front, glory to God. Oh man, it was amazing. It was, it was truly amazing. So on Saturday, please make sure that you bundle your destiny and you come and we pray. Hallelujah. Don't forget the 19th of May um, for our Pentecost miracle service. That's going to be amazing. Hallelujah. One of the miracles is that God is going to heal me of this flu that is attacking me. Amen. In fact, by the time I get there, I'll be strong. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's going to be a good one. And uh, demonstrate Wednesday. We're going to have a worship night. Uh, in this place is going to be amazing. We're going to have just a great time just to appreciate God. We're getting closer to our media appraisal. So please also uh, prepare your hearts for what God is doing. Um, prepare your hearts for what God is doing. Uh, God is doing amazing things in this place. Amen. Uh, we are seeing results every single day in small things, in big things. Hallelujah. People are graduating. Uh, people are proposing. Amen. So look, at, look at a potential proposer next to you and say, hey, proposer. Amen. So hello, spouse. Call them a spouse. In fact, we must start calling sisters and brothers spouses, amen. Just someone's spouse. You look, you look like someone's spouse, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. So we must learn to celebrate our milestones again. Uh, Nozipo's re is recording is coming up. It's a debut album, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, if you love Nozipo and you know it, buy the ticket. Amen. Just buy the ticket. Uh, never mind the price. Buy the ticket. Buy five just because. Amen. Just because. Unozipo. I mean, why not? Amen. Just buy. Hallelujah. Uh, make sure that you are there uh, 29th of June. Uh, 29th of June. It's going to be amazing. There's a couple of events, like I said, on Sunday that are happening here. Um, I'm sure you've seen on the socials as well, um, people wanting to use the space, and we praise God for that as well. Um, there's quite a number of uh, inquiries that are coming in for the use of this venue, for DVD recordings and all that stuff. So, um, so we'll use it for such. We'll allow them to come in and uh, give us money Amen. in exchange for them coming in and singing in a couple of minutes. We'll just tell them, don't dance too much on our stage. Amen. We still get to call the shots. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands tonight as we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Goshen, I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go and demonstrate the power of God to your generation. I declare that the rest of this week is blessed on your behalf. That everything you do from tomorrow morning prospers, period. That between now and Sunday, God will show up in a miraculous way in your life. The good news you've been waiting for, you will receive this week in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are experiencing delays, we remove every delay. We remove bad news, hallelujah. We suspend every bad email. We suspend every evil report. Every doctor you visit will give you good news this week in the name of Jesus. You will not get an evil report, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. And one more prayer.